Hello everybody, I am back to read you another instalment of Michael Morpurgo's Beowulf. This is a Old Norse myth about a creature called Grendel who is um, eating lots of people in a town. And Beowulf, our hopeful hero, has come to defeat Grendel and he's got lots of experience at defeating monsters in the past. So I don't know about you, but I'm really hoping he's successful. Uh, just a warning before you do listen to this one, we do get into the battle and it is very gory. So there's your warning. So we had, we've met the wife, everybody's left um, and the king has just done his final speech to say, you know, I'll give you lots of riches. I'll thank you better than any king has ever thanked you before if you slay Grendel. And now they're left alone. So saying, Hrothgar and his queen led the Danes from the hall. Only Beowulf and his Geatish thanes remained, charged now with the safety of the kingdom. The time is soon coming. So let each of us put our trust in God, said Beowulf to his men. But in our strength and fighting skills also, do this and we shall not fail. And with that, he took off his coat of mail and his helmet, and he, as he had vowed to do, he unbuckled his war sword too and gave all his armour and weapons to his faithful attendant. Before going to their beds, the Geats gathered together one last time, set forehead to forehead, drinking deep in one another's courage, fiercer now than ever in their fiery determination. We ask the Lord to bless our endeavours tonight, Beowulf whispered. Remember, we fight this fight in his name. It would be easy to come at the beast with weapons, but I shall not cut short this monster's life with my own. God given, sorry, I shall cut this monster's life short with my God given strength. Let God choose which of us shall triumph, and we have no fear of losing. Believe that, my friends, and we shall win. So Beowulf went to bed, and his men too, but in truth they slept only fitfully, for there was not one of them not Beowulf himself even, who could be certain of how the night would end, whether any of them would ever again see the light of dawn. They knew well enough how many brave Danes this Grendel creature had dragged lifeless and bleeding from Hurat. How unlikely it was that some or all of them would ever again see their hearth at, and home. In silent prayer, each of them placed his life in the hands of his almighty maker, who had from the very beginning ruled supreme in all affairs of men. Up from his lair and wrought in the shadows came Grendel. This stalker of the night, while in Hurot the warriors lay turn-tossed in their sleep. Only one of them left on ever watchful guard, every moment stealing himself for the ordeal of battle he knew must very soon come. And it was coming too. Grendel came gliding through the swirling moorland, cloudless mists, death dealing in his hate filled heart, thirsting to kill again that night as he had so often before. Down from the forest came Grendel now saw the mead house scented the sweet flesh of those inside easy victims as easy as before he thought there's a little picture of him there had the monster known what had awaited him there he would most surely have thought twice slunk back to his lair and never returned for this would be the last time the beast was ever to go out on a killing spree. Never more would the terror tyrant stalk the land. Now it was his turn to 
to suffer the panic of fear and the pain of death agony. So the giver of death and destruction would become the receiver at last. He did not know it yet though, and came on unawares to hear what. Rage racked and wreckage bent, Grendel ripped open the iron studded doors. They were no hindrance to him. He scanned the dark hall through the fire blazing eyes, saw the slumbering things still drowsy in sleep, the solitary startled sentry, the whole war band. Do you know what the sentry is? That's the person who has to stay awake to make sure that he's not coming and then he can wake up the other people if, when he does arrive. Rejoicing at the prospect of another flesh feast, this vile and vengeful creature laughed out loud at his good fortune. He would tear each and every one of them into pieces, stain Herot's floor once more with the lifeblood. A night of gore and gluttonous pleasure lay ahead of him, or so it seemed. And so it began, too, as he snatched up the first Geetish sentry he saw, Handiscro, he was, he was called, and simply tore him apart, bolting his flesh in great goblets, gnawing and gnashing on his bones, stripping the meat, sucking the veins, until, in moments, nothing of the poor helpless man was left, not a hair of his head, not a hand, not a foot, not even a nail. This is a picture of him here. Can you see him all? Just, it's not a very nice picture. I did warn you. That was just the beginning for him, he thought. On to the next victim. He pounced at once, reaching out to grab him with his killing claws. But now he was met with a grip of steel, a grip harder, tighter than he had ever known that seized him. He held him fast by the arm. Locked in the vice of his grip, he could not break free, however much he struggled. And he knew at once he had met his match. Filled with a sudden fear, the monster struggled again and again to unloose his fist. Yearning only now to be away from Herot and home again in the safety of his lair. Vainly, he tried to pull away but Beowulf's fingers fastened harder still and ever tightening grip around the callous killer's arm. How Grendel longed to get out, to escape to the forests and fens, but no power on this earth could force Beowulf to release his grip. Now Grendel knew this merciless, murderous ogre that he should never have come this night, that his death was coming and that Despite all his efforts to tear himself away, there was nothing he could do to prevent it. No way he could save himself. Fear of this death drove him mad with anger, and anger only made him stronger. He would fight to the death to save himself. He would never give in. Well, we already know the outcome, but you'll have to tune in next time to see how Beowulf actually manages it. See you next time.